Hi, everyone. I'm Kazuhiko Minematsu from NEC Corporation. In this talk, we would like to talk about ROMOS and REMS, a feature of family of lightweight authenticated encryption based on tweakable block ciphers. This is a joint work with Tetsu Iwata, Mustafa Kairare, and Toma Pera. The topic is NAND-based authenticated encryption with associated data, also called AEAD. It is a symmetric key encryption that provides confidentiality and authenticity. The encryption produces ciphertext and tag, and the decryption returns the decrypted plain text if the whole input is authentic. This picture shows the standard input and output of AEAD. We describe ROMRAS and RAMAS, a family of AEAD schemes based on tweakable block cipher. ROMRAS uses Skinny as an internal tweakable block cipher and has a standard model security. RAMAS is a derivative of ROMRAS and it uses skinny of shorter tweak than that used by Romras. The skinny is used as a block cipher. The security relies on the ideal cipher model. In this talk, we primarily focus on Romras as it is a second round candidate of NIST lightweight cryptography project. And we briefly describe Ramos at the last part of my talk. Romras has two variants, namely non-spaced N variants and misused resistant M variants. Both consist of three members, but we are planning to simplify by reducing the members, as we announced at the NIST Rightweight Cryptography Workshop 2020. Our design goal is the best of lightweight AEAD built on TBC. ROMRAS is designed to have a small state, rate one operation, and enjoys the strong security for both qualitatively and quantitatively. We also stress that the security proofs are very clean. That is an important feature for reliability. Finally, the structure of ROMRAS is simple and streamlined. This slide shows the family members of Romras. The N1 is a primary member in our submission to Nistorite Weight Crypto. And as I mentioned, we plan to reduce and we will keep only N1 and M1. The internal skinny has a 128-bit block and a 384-bit tweaky. And we will also reduce the number of rounds of skinny from 56 to 40 to boost the performance while maintaining a sufficiently large security margin for the skin. This shows Romer's N. A tilde E denotes the trick of a block cipher, and AI denotes the associated data block, and MI and CI denote the plain text and the ciphertext block. N is the nouns. T is the tag. As you can see, there is a row function that is defined over two n bit blocks. It works as a state update function. For processing a D, the first output of a row is ignored. The structure is based on an idealized version of COFB block cipher mode proposed at 2016 but we applied lots of changes and improvements. Let me describe some of the design details. We carefully considered the algorithm to reduce the state size and the branching to improve the hardware performance. To avoid additional state increase, we recover initial tweaky at the end of each TBC call 
by rewinding the tricky to the initial value. This is possible with a very small number of additional extra circuits thanks to the simple linear tricky update. We use the same row function to AD and message blocks. In fact, our plaintext feedback mode enables a limited parallelizability, but it needs more control logics because we need to implement two different row functions, so we decided not to employ. Finally, tag is obtained by the same output slot as the ciphertext block, which contributes to reduce the multiple episodes. Low function is a simple operation defined over bytes. It is a byte matrix denoted by Z as shown in the right upper figure. And this function needs a single block state since the both red and blue lines can be independently computed. Partial input can be handled by truncation and padding. The security condition for row is the same as that for COFB, which we skip here. Note that G is applied to the output side, not the inner state side. This simplifies the AD processes to the plain XOR chaining. Our matrix G has a modular form suitable to various small data paths without needing much precursors and needs only a small number of XORs which is good for both software and hardware. The internal skinny tweakable block cipher was proposed at Crypto 2016. This picture shows its round function. It is one of the most popular TBCs and uh, there are a large number of third-party analysis papers. It is going to be an ISO standard. After this cryptanalysis work, it has a quite large security merge. For the member of Skinny we use, namely 128, a block and 384 tweak key, the best attack only reached 28 rounds out of 56, with an impractical complexity much larger than 228. For attack complexity of up to 228, only 22 rounds are attacked. It implies that even if we reduce it to 40 rounds, we have about 45 security merge. The performance of Skinny is excellent on hardware and good for software. This slide summarizes the features of LomaSen. It has a small set size, which is the same as those needed to implement the RTBC. And it is a rate one, more precisely, nbit message power one TBC call and n plus tbit associated data power one call. Here, t equals to the n for Romulus n1. Because the computation overhead is quite small, it is particularly good for short message. For security, it has n bit security with n bit block TBC. The security proof is based on the standard model, that is, the security of Romulus N is reduced to the CPS security of TBC, also called TPRP security. This is a conservative model, and it is desirable since we do not have to worry about the gap between the model and the instantiations. This is contrastive to the case of some sponge constructions where large small round permutations are used internally and no ideal behaviors are observed for these permutations. The limitation of the our scheme is that it has a serial operation for both encryption and decryption. We think this is acceptable and reasonable for the applications of lightweight cryptography. In case we need to process many messages at server side, for example, parallel operation is still possible in general, 
and parallelizability is not much beneficial to constraint devices. Uh, this slide shows the security bound of Roma SN. As you can see here, the privacy notion is tightly reduced to the TPRP advantage of TVC. The authenticity is reduced to TPRP advantage plus roughly the number of decryption queries divided by the tag space size. These bounds are equal to the famous theta CB3, an idealized version of a CB3 within constants. Also, Assuming skin is secure, the bounds are equal to those achieved by an ideal AE scheme that has a privacy bound being zero and authenticity bound being QD over two to the tau. The point is that we have no degradation in terms of number of encryption queries and query lengths. This is a strong feature achievable by TBC based mode with standard model re reduction. To understand the power of full n bit standard model security, let me show some examples. If we encrypt 2 to the 50 bytes of data with 2 to the 50 decryption queries, the security bound of ROMRAS still guarantees that the success probability is at the most epsilon plus 2 to the minus 50, uh, 75 for epsilon being the TPRP advantage of TVC. In addition, suppose that there are 2 to the 20 users. Then, it still guarantees the success probability is at the most epsilon prime plus 2 to the minus 55 for epsilon prime being the multi-user variant of TPRP security. This is obtained from the standard conversion to the multi-user setting. And this is much stronger than the common boosted type bound that contains sigma squared over two to the n, where sigma is the number of total processed blocks. For the case of example one, the bound is epsilon plus two to the minus 32. And for the case of example two, the bound is further increased to option prime plus two to the minus 12. Let me move to the description of Lomas M, our nonce misuse resistant version. It is based on SIV mode by Rogov and Shrimpton, as well as many other nonce misuse resistant schemes. It greatly shares almost n components, so it is pretty easy to implement both. The security proof is a standard model and uses proof techniques introduced by Naito and Sugawara and Natmark proposed by Koliati et al. in 2017. This slide shows the security bound of Romulus M. For nonce respecting adversary, the bounds are essentially equal to Romulus M. For nonce misusing adversary with maximum R repetition of nonce at encryption, the, pri uh, the privacy bound is R times the total queried blocks in encryption divided by two to the N, and the authenticity bound is roughly R times the total number of queries divided by two to the n. There is no degradation in input ranks ex except nonce misuse privacy, and it enjoys a graceful degradation, which means that the security is gradually reduced with respect to the parameter r. That is, if the number of nonce repetition is small and the security is almost n bits, and it maintains half of n-bit security even at the worst case of using fixed NAS. Recently, we showed that the security of Romulus M is preserved under the scenario of the release of unverified print text, RUP. 
RUP is a kind of misuse that enables the adversary to access the unverified plain text at decryption regardless of verification results. It can happen when decryption device does not have enough memory, for example. And this may break many common A schemes such as OCB. There are two privacy notions under RUP called plain text awareness one and two, and one authenticity notion called int RUP. For Romas M, we proved that Romas M is PA1 secure and int wrap secure. This is the same as original SIB. Here, PA2 is impossible to meet with SIB style constructions. The interrupt bounds are equal to the original authenticity bounds for both non suspecting and non misusing adversaries. This shows a brief comparison with other TBC based schemes assuming we use the same TBC. See the paper for more comprehensive tables. It shows that Romas N and Romas M have smaller state size than previous schemes with standard model security. They also achieved the best encryption rate. Now I move to implementation aspects of Romas. First, the ASIC performance. This slide shows a ranking taken from the public site that benchmarked eight second round candidates. For details, please refer to the report. This table shows that Romas is among the top performers for various measures. This shows the throughput and area of submitted schemes and this shows the energy and area of submitted schemes. For both cases, Romas presents pretty good trade-off in yeah, these measures. We show some concrete figures of top performers from this benchmark. As you can see, the subterranean is the best, but Romas is also very competitive. Let me describe some hardware implementation details. First, we utilize the Skinny's free linear tweaky scheduling. As I mentioned, it reverses tweaky to the initial value at the end of every TBC call, and this requires only 16 7 XOR gates. If we were to maintain tweaky state, at least 320 free props would be additionally needed. The skinny core is very lightweight, so it is also suitable to full armor circuit. For example, the speed will be doubled by two round unrolling, which needs about additional 1,000 gateway equivalents, and that increases the total area by only 20%. For FPGAs, there is a comprehensive benchmark led by the people from GMU. From their report, we found that Romas N1 is the second smallest design on Arctic 7 in terms of the number of slices and the sevens in terms of the throughput per cycle out of 22 benchmarked candidates. Also, Romas N1 is one of the very few designs to achieve competitive performance with less than 1,000 lookup tables. For microcontrollers, that is also a comprehensive benchmark led by Lena, Potterborn, and Motodoc. From this benchmark, for 32-bit platforms, Romas N1 is ranked in the middle regarding the throughput. Interestingly, for 8-bit platforms, Romas N1 is in the top tier and our new 40 land version gained the performance by a factor of 
and is in the top candidates, as shown in the right. We think 8-bit platform is important because it is very constrained and the AES is not very efficient on that. In the rest of my talk, let me briefly describe Ramos. The structure of Ramos is close to Ramos, but the internal TBC is built on a block cipher, which is modeled as an ideal cipher in the security proofs. The conversion of IC to TBC is called IC-based encryption, or ICE for short. This conversion is a variant of XHX proposed at 2017, but we optimized XHX to reduce that size and the computation for counter-incrementation. A block cipher of n-bit block and key is used to implement a TBC of n-bit block to n-bit tweak and n-bit key. We developed three versions of ICE ICE, namely ICE 1 and 2 and 3, having different non-space mask generations. The masks, masks are L and V, shown in the slides. The security bounds of Ramos are those of Romulus plus the bound of IC. The latter is order of sigma square over 2 to the C, where C equals N for IS1 and IS3, and C equals to 2 to the 2 N for IS2. The proofs are modular and clean, namely, we first show that IC is a secure TBC and show that Ramos mode is secure if the underlying TBC is secure. To conclude, we propose the Romulus and Ramus, and this talk focus on Romulus. Romulus is what we believe the best we can do for lightweight, highly reliable AD with TBC. It enjoys a very strong global security bounds in the standard model for both non-respecting variant of Romulus N and non-misusing variant of Romulus M. The security of Romulus is reduced to the Skinny's high security. Moreover, we only need Skinny's CPA security against a single key setting. The mode of Romulus achieves weight 1 and is minimum as a tweakable block cipher based AE with standard model security. That's the end of my talk. Thanks for listening.